Okay, so now we've gone through, we've had a look at all our different risks um, by this stage and, and you know, we've had our process of making sure that we've captured them all, we've made sure that we've got a fairly good idea of what can go wrong in our organisation and we've started to categorise them from, you know, what's the likelihood of them happening, um, you know, once we know what the likelihood were, what's the consequence of that going to be? We start to think about, well, what might cause that or when might it occur? Um, what are the contributing factors, right? So we started to think about all those different things. And now what we need to do is start to think about, well, how are we going to actually treat those risks? Okay, so what are we going to do about it? Um, and what we're starting to think about here is coming up with a set of uh, strategies. Okay, so strategies for treating risk. And what we're talking about there is, um, you know, what can we put in place to try and stop them or prevent them or minimize them or um, reduce the damage that can occur if they do occur, okay? So really we're starting to look at control. And that's part of the uh, ongoing overall improvement of an organization, okay? The more we can get an understanding of what can go wrong in the organization, the better the chance is that we can actually come up with ways to improve our organization, um, to reduce loss, to reduce damage, to reduce all those things that are gonna happen um, and position ourselves to be able to respond quickly when they occur. Okay, so remembering that um, the organization is also not static. Okay, so we need to bear that in mind as well that, okay, we, we've done that now and we've, we've put these things in place now, but we need to continually be aware that the organization is always shifting and changing. New customers are coming in, new products are coming in, um, you know, things are always changing around us and it's not set in stone. All right, so what we start to think about for our risk treatment and our risk plans is that they need to bear in mind that you know, things are gonna change in the organization and that these need to be reviewed on an ongoing basis to make sure that we're keeping up with that. Okay, so you know, what we've really got, it's a, it's, a, it's a circular process. Okay, which means that we're always going through the process from the beginning of let's have a look at what's going on in the organization to what can go wrong um, to how we're going to fix it, so we put those things in place, then we review, and we keep going around that cycle as we go. All right. So, so what we want to do is remember that you know, we start with the you know, let's investigate what's going on. Comes around to we come up with a review. Okay, we come up with changes, and then we just we're continually just going around in a bit of a loop. All right. So we need to bear that in mind as we're going. All right. So there's a couple of different strategies we can implement when we're going through all this. Okay, so when we start to think in terms of, um, you know, fixing risk, there's a couple of different strategies that we can employ. And the first strategy we think about is, can we avoid the risk, okay? Is this something we can just get rid of, um, or is it, um, you know, something we need to keep? We start to think about, can we reduce the likelihood or consequence of occurrence? So can we try and avoid it altogether, or can we just try and, you know, reduce the, uh, the likelihood? Can we transfer the risk to someone else, um, you know, through insurance or um, get, you know, outsource the problem? Um, can we isolate the problem or isolate people from the problem? Or do we have to retain the risk at the end of the day? Okay, so there are a couple of different strategies. We're gonna talk those through. So the first one we talk about is avoidance. Okay, in other words, can we avoid the risk? And what we're talking about there is we make a decision not to come in, you know, not to become involved in the situation that can um, bring risk onto us. Okay, in other words, we just don't do that activity. Okay, if we we're planning to do something and we get to the point that we think it's too risky, um, how do we just not do it? You know, can we come up with a plan B? Is there something else we can do instead of actually undertaking that activity? So, you know, to avoid, do not do. That's what we're going to do. We're going to avoid the problem. All right. Um, plan B, you know, anything apart from actually undertake the risk. All right. So if the risk is too great, we don't want to lose that. We just don't do it. Okay, so that could involve termination, non-initiation, withdrawal from an activity. Um, you know, you might have to shut things down for a day to fix them, whatever it happens to be. But, um, you know, you really, at this point, that's the most extreme measure, just avoid. The next one is to start to think about, okay, well, we're deciding that we still want to go ahead. Um, we want to go ahead with our activity, so can we just control the risk? Okay, we're worried that something can happen, but can we put things in place to prevent them happening? Can we undertake a, a, a control mechanism? And what we're doing there is we're just trying to reduce. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to reduce the likelihood or consequence, and or consequence, actually. Okay, that's where we're trying to get rid of the likelihood, try and get the, uh, the consequence down, and start to think about, um, you know, 
how, how do we change that? If, if, if we think it's gonna happen, there's a high likelihood, how can we reduce that likelihood? If we think about the consequence, well, how can we take some of the consequence away? Um, things like driving a car, okay? Well, we've decided you know, we could avoid driving cars. Um, we know they're risky and accidents can happen and people can die. But every day people decide, well, I'm still gonna drive a car anyway. Okay, well, if we are gonna drive a car, how can we prevent the accidents? How can we prevent death? Um, how can we lower the chance of having a crash? Okay, well, that's pretty straightforward. We, you know, we can put in street signs, we can put in laws, um, we can wear seat belts, okay, a lot of those things. So that's, a, that's an example of reducing or controlling the likelihood or, or consequence, okay, to try and bring those things down. The next one is I can think about risk transfer. Okay, and what I'm doing with the risk transfer is I'm, uh, or, or risk sharing, is not just assuming the whole risk by myself. So we could start to think about, um, you know, getting some insurance or combining with another third party um, to sort of offset some of the risk there. So if I had that car that I just bought, well, I could crash the car and damage the car and I could hurt myself, but you know, and that, that's pretty bad, but what about the actual cost of the vehicle? Well, I can get insurance so that at least if I crash the car, um, I don't lose all my money and I don't lose the vehicle itself. I might be able to you know, get insurance money and, and buy a new vehicle, whatever it happens to be. So if the loss of the risk of the vehicle or alternately I could buy a car and it could get stolen, um, I don't want to lose all my money when my car gets stolen, so I might get insurance there and transfer some of the risk of the loss onto someone else. Okay, we can also go down to risk isolation. And what we're talking about with risk isolation is that um, we try and put the risk over somewhere else so that it doesn't affect the people. So if I have a, you know, like, I mean, I guess with cars, once again, we put cars on roads and the people on a footpath. We don't have them sharing the same space. So what we're trying to do is we understand that cars can be a risk driving down the road, so we need to isolate them from the people. We might put expressways and highways and people can drive fast where there's no, you know, humans walking around. Um, in the cities, we might say, well, okay, well, here's the road, but here's the footpath and they shouldn't cross. Um, you know, so to try and keep the risk away from the person to once again reduce the likelihood of something going wrong. Okay, we can do that in a company by having, you know, um, plant machinery away from our workers, whatever it happens to be. And then we also think about retention. Okay, and what we're talking about with the retention is whatever's left over after all that, we just accept. Okay, so we accept the burden of loss or benefit, that comes on to us, um, we're just going to live with it. All right, and, and we might have some, like it might be what's left or we might have to just accept the whole thing depending on what's going on. Um, and you know, and we just start retaining the risk. And where that would normally come up is, as I say, the residual, we might just retain that and say, well, okay, we've got it down to, we can't avoid it. We've controlled it as much as we can. We've transferred as much as we can. We've isolated as much as we can. Right, whatever's left is gonna be, you know, that's us. Or if we go, you know, I've bought my car, I've, uh, I've controlled the risk, I've parked it in safe areas. Um, I can't really transfer the risk onto someone else because the insurance premium's too high. Um, I'm just gonna have to accept that I can't insure my car because the insurance is almost as much as it would cost me to buy a new car if I lose it. Okay, now, the other problem is, is that just remember that even though you went through all these processes, that um, you, know, you don't have all your risks definitely known. Okay, you've done the best you can, but understand that you don't know everything that's happened. So anything that you didn't see, if you're still going ahead with it, you're still retaining the risk, all right? So this comes down to really why you need to make sure you're checking for all the risks that can happen. All right, so once you've gone through all that process, you've now gone through, you've looked at all the risks that can happen, you've thought about all the ones that you, had, you know, were sort of stuck with, you go through the process, you know, can I avoid it? You know, can I get rid of the risk? Okay, no, I have to keep it where it's still doing the activity. Okay, can I control the risk? Can I reduce the likelihood of consequence? Get that down as low as I can, right? Is there anything I can then insure or move or uh, trade about or get someone else to deal with? Um, okay, whatever I can get out of that. Isolation, can I remove things, you know, separate people mechanically or otherwise? Um, you know, I've gone through that stage. Okay, whatever's left, that's mine. Now, whatever's left, that's mine. I still need to think, is that an acceptable risk to my organization? I got it as low as I could. Um, at the end of the day, if I'm gonna go ahead, I have to keep it. Um, is it still low enough? Like, I mean, am I still gonna commit, overcommit, or, you know, how's it gonna be? So, you know, I don't have to retain. I could still go back to, I've gone through a list. I'm still not happy with it. No, we're gonna have to avoid it, all right? But you need to make sure that if you get into this position, that you're happy with the result. And understand 
that anything you weren't aware of, you're also retaining. So just you know, think carefully, plan accordingly. All right, so that's just think, thinking about those considerations and then we'll move on. So now what we need to do is, um, you know, now that we've gone through and we've had a look at all those different risks and, and you know, um, it's a pretty straightforward thing about, think about, well, what are my options for treating the risk? Um, access and select the options that we're gonna use. Uh, we need to prepare our plans and we need to implement the plans. Okay, so when we're coming up with uh, preparing the plan and implementing the plan, there's a couple of different things that we're gonna look at. There's a couple of different sort of headlines for the risk treatment plan that we need to, um, to put in mind. And that is, you know, and you can come up with, you know, sort of your tables or whatever that you wanna do. Um, but what you need first is you need to think about, well, what's your proposed action? Okay, so what are we going to do? We know, we know what the risks are. Okay, so I can put my risk in there and, and I've got a bit of a synopsis. So what's my proposed action? What am I gonna do about it? Okay, um, how are we planning on treating the risk? We need to think about what are my resource requirements? Okay, so what resources do I need to do that? Um, do I need money, time, equipment, people? You know, what is it that I need to do in order to um, you know, treat that, uh, that risk? Um, I need to know who's responsible. Okay, so who's going to be responsible for implementing this? Who's going to be responsible for monitoring this? Um, who's responsible for reporting? Okay, so we need to know all those different, um, you know, the, the who comes down to their responsibilities. I need to think about the timing. Okay, so I might put that on my chart as well. Then the timing is, uh, when do I need to start? By when do I need to be finished? Um, how often am I going to check? Okay, so this is all the key timings. Um, when do I need to review this by, etc. Okay, so who needs to know what by when, etc. Okay, I need to think about my performance measures. So how am I going to um, know whether or not my treatment's being effective? Okay, what should I see as a result? If I've um, thought about, you know, what my proposed action is, I've started to implement it, um, I've assigned my resource requirements, I know who's responsible, I know what my timings are, how and when am I going to check to make sure this is being effective? Okay, so what should I see as a result? Is it a reduction in the severity? Is it a reduction in the likelihood? Is it a reduction in you know, the consequences, whatever it happens to be? And then lastly, reporting and monitoring. Okay, and what we're talking about there on my action chart is coming up with, well, when do I need to, um, you know, when do I need information back as the business owner, business manager, whoever, who needs to know the information? What are they gonna be checking? How often are they gonna be checking it? Um, what format does the report take to let us know what's going on? Um, how are we gonna review the process? Okay, so it's continual the process of review. So what you should end up with is you've, you've identified your risks that you've gone into earlier, you've identified your options, you've thought about the options, and now you should be preparing a bit of a table with your different risks and coming up with you know risk number one, risk number two, risk number three, risk number four done in order of likelihood and consequence. So your most dangerous things, the worst things that can happen to your, to your organization, those big, big bad ones, obviously they're the first thing you're gonna deal with. Then it's the second thing, the second um, worst, then the third worst, then the fourth worst, all the way down your list until you got the ones that you're not really worried about all the way down here or anything you're planning on dealing with. So what you should end up with is a fairly good table or a matrix there, um, ready to go off and start to implement. Now, before you can implement it, the next thing you need to do is think about well, how you're gonna communicate this plan. All right, you've come up with a plan, you've identified all your risks, you know what you're gonna do about them, you know what the consequence and likelihood is, you know where you should be once you do something about it. Okay, awesome, but how does everybody know that? So the next thing you need to do is make sure that everyone in your organization knows about it by communicating your, uh, your plan fairly quickly. Um, and the purpose of um, communicating it is to make sure that People who are responsible for implementing the plan, whatever their role happens to be, um, they know what uh, their responsibilities are. They know what they're supposed to be doing. They know who they're supposed to answer to. They know who they're supposed to report problems to. So everyone has to have a really good understanding of what their role and responsibility is in that, which means you need to uh, communicate it to them. Um, it's also part of effective change management because if only half your organization knows what's going on and the other half doesn't, what you create there is a lot of confusion. So you've got to make sure that everyone's, you know, everyone's aware of what's going on and their role within it. And the other thing is, is you want to make sure that your risk management plans are actually um, sort of supported and there's a commitment to them. So by making sure that everyone, especially at a senior level, is aware of these, um, they know how they're supposed to participate in that and can, you know, and they'll take it seriously as opposed to seeing it as something that someone else is doing, all right? So the risk management plan, look, it's an excellent form of communication in itself, uh, provided you keep it clear, you keep it up to date and readily accessible to staff uh, and all your other relevant stakeholders. 
Okay, obviously you're not gonna give the whole plan to every single person. Um, you know, if there's, you know, if it's not really relevant to that branch department or area, um, you might not necessarily give them something that's not relevant to their area. So you might need to think about how you communicate and what parts of it you communicate. Um, obviously your whole risk management plan would be somewhere that's accessible to your senior management team um, or for yourself, just to make sure you've always got visibility on it. You know, you don't have to um, overkill onto everybody. All right, so that's what you should have by now. You'll have that whole, um, you know, earlier works and your consequence and likelihood. Um, and now you'll have down here a risk treatment plan. You'll have a really good process of when I need to review this and how often. You'll remember that your business isn't static, so you're not just gonna leave it there, um, you know, thinking that it's, you know, this is done forever. And we need to make sure that we've got an ongoing process of review um, once we've implemented so that then we can identify new risks and new problems and come up with new options to fix them and then go through this again, okay? So the risk implement review is always going on. So, you know, I analyze, I implement what's going on, um, you know, or implement my changes. I then review to see if it was effective and then I check it once again, analyze, um, implement my new changes and then review what's going on and it's just a circle that keeps on going, okay? Um, more people come up, new things come in, uh, new business practices come on and that's what we've got there. So come up with your tables, come up with your charts, come up with a plan to, um, to implement and then we'll go on to the review stage. Um, you've now got a risk plan put together or you should have at least a fairly good understanding of what you're gonna do um, and a whole pile of documentation. And the documentation you would have kept is um, uh, when you went through and did your initial surveys, when you got feedback, all that documentation that you've got, keep it, okay? Nothing should get thrown out. Um, you should be able to keep copies of just about everything. Um, when you had any minutes of meetings, uh, any groups together, any brainstorms, all that sort of paperwork, keep the whole lot as you're going along. Um, any initial plans that you come up with, keep copies of it. It's, it, it, it's amazing stuff, it's a fantastic business resource. Um, and it's also, um, you know, it demonstrates that the process has been correctly followed. Because um, part of the, the risk is obviously if something does go wrong, um, the question's obviously gonna come up is, well, did we know about that? Um, you know, did we, did we take responsibility for it? Um, did we try and do something about it once we knew about it? You know, those sort of things. So ignorance is no excuse. Um, and if you find yourself in court because you're being sued over something, uh, being able to say that you took all the necessary and reasonable steps is gonna go a long way in your favor. And it also, you know, you don't wanna hurt people. All right, so make sure you're keeping copies of all your documentation um, and, and you know, keep them somewhere in your organization that you can access. It also shows um, evidence of a systematic approach to risk management, that you are looking at the systems, that you are thinking about what can happen. Um, you do actually have a process that you have in place and that you're approaching this in an organized fashion. Okay, so it provides the records um, of you know, identified problems and, and expands out your organizational general knowledge. Okay, so you know, if you had all these people looking through your business, coming up with uh, their ideas, um, you've had all those different levels of people looking at it. Okay, there's a wealth of information that's gonna be generated. And look, this is a really good way to understand what's actually going on in your business. Not just what you think is going on, um, but all the sort of, um, not just all the sexy stuff, obviously, but, but all the stuff that might not be so sexy. And a lot of the operational things that you might have lost sight of. Okay, this is where you're gonna identify whether people have made up their own ways of doing things, they've made up their own rules. Because you know what they're supposed to be doing, but once they've gone through this process, you'll start to get a good idea of what people are actually doing. And sometimes that can be two different things. Okay, and the other thing is it provides an audit trail. So later on down the track, if you wanna find out what's going on or, or when things took place, you can actually go all the way back to the beginning and say, well, what, you know, when we started, what did we say we were doing? Um, and we can check those things out and this is paperwork all the way back through. So I can't stress that you know, strongly enough. Keep copies of everything, all right? Um, you know, one from a legal standpoint, obviously to be able to defend yourself later if things go wrong, but also because it just provides such a great tool for analyzing your organization and analyzing what's going on and sort of where you're at, okay? So it's a fantastic business tool for understanding your operation. The other thing it does is it also, um, it communicates good information, okay? So it lets your people know that you take safety and you know, those sort of things seriously. And that, that's a good message for the people who work with you and it's a good message for your stakeholders and encourages them to do business with you because you're seen as a responsible organization, okay? And it also provides accountability because people know what their job's going to be. Um, they know what they should be doing. Um, they know when they should be doing it, etc. okay? So um, it is that great management tool um, and certainly helps you along. Um, one of the things that you'll develop out of this will be a risk register. 
Okay, and with the risk register, that matrix we just did a minute ago with, you know, whose accountability and, and, and what resources, all that sort of stuff, um, you know, you keep a risk register. So what you should have is some sort of booklet, you know, and you've got the risk at the top, so what could go wrong, and then all those details that you just did there before, you know. If this happens, then that, you know, and who's going to monitor it, who's going to, um, you know, um, you know, all those sort of things about uh, details there, but also have the register there so that if new things coming up, so you've got your risk treatment plan that everyone have, but in the risk register also have um, new things that have arisen. So if someone identifies a new risk, make sure they record it for you with your register. Make sure that, um, you know, your risk treatment plan's there, but also as new, you know, new things are identified, that that's tracked. So make sure that you know, they've got an ability to put down the details of the newly identified risk, the name of the person who uh, found the risk and the date, uh, and description what the uh, risk was. Okay, so when we're talking about that, we're talking about a near miss or something that they thought could have happened. Um, you know, that, you know, they were looking at the business and they've, they've identified something they're concerned about. You know, they've got a risk treatment plan, so if something happens, they know what to do straight away. Um, but what happens is, all too often in business, is they saw the problem, they fixed the problem, but then they don't report that the problem took place. And that's what this is really getting down to. So let them tell you what the potential impact of that risk could have been, um, what they thought the probability was, and, and the proximity, so what caused it. Okay, so track the near misses in your organization. Track anything that does go wrong. Um, give people good information on what to do when things go wrong, but also make sure you're capturing either actual incidences or near incidences in the business and make sure that's being tracked back through a register and people are actually you know, continually reviewing what's happening. Okay, because if all of a sudden a bunch of things start to, um, start to occur and you start to see a new pattern emerging, you want to be able to jump on that straight away rather than sort of wait until you do your annual review or something later. All right, so that's pretty much on documenting storage. Get your risk register together and then we're going to start to look at how to monitor and review. Okay, so just finishing off, all right, you've now got your risk registers out there, you've got everything going in the organization, um, and by now, if you've done this right, everything should be going pretty well. Um, you should have a fairly good idea of how your business works, um, what are the dangers, what are the risks, what are your concerns, um, you know, you've got all your tables and charts put together, and now we start to finish off with the monitoring and review phases. So what we're really talking about there is uh, the monitoring and review process is undertaken in respect to um, you know, the risk exposure to the organization and thinking through um, you know, how effective is our risk management plan. Okay, so we're, we're gonna be going through and start to analyze, well, what's now happening? Okay, we know what we wanted to do about it. Uh, we knew what the risks were, we knew what our treatment was. Now we're gonna be going through and just checking to make sure it's okay. So risk management is the, just a continuous and ongoing process of monitoring the elements to find out, you know, first of all, what and if, so what's gone wrong, if anything's gone wrong, um, and then how effective was our treatment. Okay, so we start to analyze the reports, okay, what's gone wrong, um, if anything went wrong, um, if it did occur, did we actually try and treat it the way we said the plan was gonna go, did everyone know what was happening? You know, you could have a great plan, but if all of a sudden you found out no one actually knew what to do, um, that tells you you got a problem with your communication strategy. Or, okay, everyone knew what to do, but they tried to do what you said to do and it really didn't work. Okay, well then there's a problem with the treatment. Or, okay, we planned on this happening, but it didn't happen at all. So the concern there was, or what we need to know is, did it not happen because we had good plans in place to prevent it? Um, or, you know, or did we actually just overstate it in the beginning? All right, so it's a continuous process. Um, and what, it, what we hope to get out of it is Have we identified anything new during the process? Um, what was the new risk? Oh, well, actually, well, look, this problem occurred. Um, no one really knew what to do, so the plan wasn't that effective. Okay, well, the answer here is not to fix the plan. The answer here is, well, the actual risk emerging is we don't communicate in our organization. So there's insufficient communication. So what we now need to do is come up with an action plan to fix the communications gap that we've now identified. All right, so it's not always about just fixing what's on the paper, it's also looking for what's missing here. What aren't we getting right? What could we do better? What could we do more effectively? Um, are there new ways to do things? Um, a prime example of the monitoring and review is that um, you know, a property I look after is a, um, is a community hall 
and it has a lot of children use it. Okay, so it's a lot of children using it, um, and there's usually only one or two adults and a whole lot of kids. Now, when I say kids, I'm talking from sort of like, you know, yay big up to sort of yay big. You know, some of them are teenagers, uh, most of them are girls, given the nature of the, the place it is. And we've got a great hall, but it's made of wood, so we've got great fire extinguishers and we've got great fire sensors. Um, now, while I was doing a review of the place, I looked at the fire extinguisher and we had a perfectly fantastic fire extinguisher. It's about yay big, uh, and when I pulled it off the wall, I, realized, you know, I sort of felt, gee, this is, this is pretty heavy. Um, but it was in date and it was a perfect size extinguisher, could happily put out all the, uh, the, you know, the issues in the hall. So when we're thinking risk management, there's a chance of fire, fantastic, we'll get a fire extinguisher, job done. Um, but then it sort of occurred to me that, but hang on, the people that are gonna come here on a regular basis are, you know, women and small children. Um, now, if I'm a fairly you know, solid guy trying to pick up this extinguisher and I'm finding it pretty heavy, uh, what chance does someone half my size have of picking up that same extinguisher and being able to employ it in the case of emergency? And the reality is, is they would have no hope. So if I went on a standard tick chart and went, yes, we thought there's a fire, it could happen. Look, we've treated it, aren't we clever? Hey, everybody, here's a fire extinguisher. Everybody knows what to do, but they're not really capable of doing it. So what I had to do was actually think about, well, I need to get rid of that fire extinguisher and come up with a new plan because the risk is that, hey, they can't pick it up and they can't employ it effectively. Or what happens if the adult falls over? What are the teenagers gonna do um, if they can't lift it on? So what I need to do is actually improve my plan and go and get two smaller extinguisher systems that will effectively achieve the same thing, but you know, different people can use it. You don't need to be as physically big and strong to, to haul a thing around a, a great big community hall. Okay, so that's when all of a sudden you realize when you're doing your risk, you know, follow up and start to think through in the cold light of day, what's wrong, that's when you're gonna identify your new risks there. And the risk was that I've got a great system in place, uh, but it's not actually effective for the people that need to use it. For me, it's great. Um, but for them, the people that are gonna be affected by it day to day, not so great. All right, so that's when you're gonna start to identify new risks coming out. Okay, you'll identify the inadequacies of your original plan. Um, and you'll see you know, what steps weren't followed, um, what was missed, how were those steps missed? And you know, that could be the question. We did the plan because we did the plan in isolation. What we should have probably done was actually involve some of these people and go, well, there's the extinguisher, pick it up. And it should have occurred to us straight away that it was too heavy for most people to use, all right? Um, you know, we might also find that there's new extinguishers out. We might find there's new technology uh, when we're doing the review, like, I mean, we first implemented that years ago. What's changed in the industry? Is there a better way to do things? And we just had that with our security alarm systems. You know, there are new, better, and, and faster, more effective systems that have come out. So after seven years rolling with really old stuff, we've now got really modern stuff. And the thing was, it ended up saving us money as well. Okay, so there's a whole lot of new things that change over time. And we need to make sure we're continually reviewing to say, well, okay, what is new? What has changed? How are we communicating it? Um, how are we monitoring it to avoid problems? Are we checking these things to make sure, you know, if you've got a fire extinguisher system, um, who's checking that to make sure that it works on an ongoing basis uh, and that it's doing its job and it's effective for the task at hand. All right, so, you know, when we're doing our monitoring and review, that's gonna tell us a whole lot about what's happening for our business. Um, it'll start to tell us about, you know, where our communication's effective, you know, where our staff are aware, You know, what things were in our control? You know, what was out of our control? What can we do better? You know, are there new ways, etc. Okay, so there's a whole lot of stuff that's gonna come out of that. Make sure you're monitoring and reviewing on an ongoing basis. Um, you, know, you know, if you've got, you know, fire inspections and all that, at least do it every six months if you're in a risk area. Um, obviously, if you identify a problem beforehand, that's why you had that risk register that people, if they identify things, great, act on it. Um, if no one's identified anything and it's been six months, start doing your check, roll it out, um, bring your people in. It's great staff training. It's a great way to develop your future managers as well. Uh, make sure you're always consulting with your people, keeping all your documenting uh, together, coming up with your plans, always examining. All right? And this is the way you're gonna stay out of trouble in business, all right? just by continually looking at what can go wrong and ways to improve it. And it can be little things as well. It doesn't always have to be about someone being dead or some huge, massive you know, problem. You know, it, it improves the smaller things. You find out where your problems are and then what you can do about them and start to eliminate them. And um, you know, you're gonna save yourself time, save yourself money in the long run, okay? So that's risk management in a nutshell. Uh, there's some good uh, tables and charts. Use those, think about having all those registers, think about documentation. Key point is, 
make it easy to understand for everybody and make sure that you consult as many people as possible to get the best possible range of options. All right, and that's just a bit of an introduction to risk management.